I was having some pretty low moments and I found this quote and it certainly turned out to be true for my studio. I won't go into that full story here, just know that I feel like the hand of God has been in this all the way. There was an awful lot that needed to be done to this building before I could even open the doors, but I have to say that I'm so happy that it came forth and was for rent at just the right time for me. Remember these walls when I first took possession of the building? Well, it doesn't look anything like this now. I've painted and it and filled it with beautiful artwork and it looks so different. I'm so proud of this place. Well, I'm not necessarily proud of the way it looked then, but I'm proud of the way it looks now. I had a lot of help from friends who volunteered to come in and do painting and uh, helping fix holes in the walls and in the doors and just all kinds of little jobs that needed to be done. Uh, I had an electrician friend who installed some lights in the back so I wouldn't kill myself whenever it was dark back there, tripping over things. But this is how it did look, uh, just a little reminder. I had a few things had already started cleaning at this point, but it doesn't look like this anymore. I really have to say if those friends hadn't come forward and helped me, just volunteered to come in and help, there is no way that I could have opened uh, in a month like I did. It was, took about a month and a half to open the doors. So they just did all kinds of things. I just can't, I'm, I'm so thankful. I just didn't know I had friends out there like that. I appreciate you all. So this is a quick look at what it used to look like before I show you what it looked like whenever we had the ribbon cutting ceremony on November 12th and opened the doors. Even this has changed in the back. It sure didn't hurt that I have great landlords. The hair is now gone too. We posted this little notice around the city in lots of bright colors. And even before our doors opened, we had events there outside the doors. Uh, Halloween, and all the children came through Main Street to get their little Halloween treats, the children and adults. So I had all these little treats ready with little flyers on it talking about our grand opening. I had 1,500 treats ready, and we had to close our doors 10 minutes before trick-or-treating on Main Street was over because we were out of candy. This grand opening made me appreciate my great friends. I popped in the bathroom to put on a little lipstick and when I came out, my friends Vicki, Candy, Jamie, Deborah, and a brand new friend Donna were in the kitchen prepping for the grand opening. And people were just busy all over the place. The vendors were setting up. Seneca had the idea to take over my office and turn it into a vet center because it was very close to Veterans Day, November 11th being Veterans Day. And he made this display with some of his personal effects and some of his uniforms from being on the honor guard in his tribe and pictures of his relatives who have been in the service. There's his eagle feather that he wears uh, with these different uniforms as he goes to different functions. And it, it was a really popular area. My little office became totally the vet center back there. It became very popular with the gentlemen. They were really excited to see some of these things. So that turned out to be a pretty cool idea, something that I didn't even know that he was cooking up. Leave it to Seneca for an original idea. And I didn't even have to do anything in here. He totally took care of it all. Oh, there's some of the earrings that he makes for his tribe uh, in his some of the tribal colors. And he had those back there and some kind of antique things. Lot, just lots of interesting little tidbits of things. There's his tribal flag, United Couture Band. And we love this sign. We think it's funny. Um, an old typewriter. Just everything he could put in there to make, um, to reminisce about arm, army days. It was fun. My cousin Roger is the man behind the camera for most of these pictures, and he is a very dear person. He's been a very dear cousin of mine, very close to my heart. 
he popped in at just the right time to run after ice and do all kinds of little things for me. I was really appreciative of that. Here they're getting set up. Uh, we had pillows and mats and just all kinds of things. They're showing my studio all set, er, set up there. It's not the studio exactly. It's the classroom. And it's looking pretty nice if I do say so. This is before grand opening when all the vendors were in there setting up and making things ready. I made a mess of my class list here on the right. I got everything. Uh, some of the classes I posted on top of other classes. I tried to do that the night before. I kept thinking, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And the night before, I was up at 2 o'clock the morning before trying to get that done. And it just, I shouldn't have, I should have gone to bed because I made a mess of the whole thing. Had to redo it the next day. I hope some people aren't looking at that, at that thinking, what in the world was she thinking? It cost me a pretty penny to have those printed up and they were useless. So Roger's still taking pictures here of some of my art that's on the walls. I pretty much eliminated all my art except the Native American influenced art for that night since we did a Native American theme. I thought this eagle table went very nicely with some of the things that I had displayed there, the eagle feathers and the eagles. and That was a uh, an item from my aunt and uncle's estate. And then we go over to the horses. <laughs> Roger took pictures of all of my art. And the next thing is my dragonflies. You've seen a lot of this art before, I'm sure, on other videos. I had a dragonfly feather there that I added to that. Lots and lots of dragonflies. Those are my pool gloves on the table. Another dragonfly. Can't tell I love dragonflies, can you? And another shot of the pool gloves. There's the wolf on the headboard. I have some watercolors and paintings behind the gloves. I always wanted to light this tree when I would go to craft um, craft shows, but it took so long to put this display together. Now I can light the tree, and there's an angel made from junk. Vicki, the librarian, came down one day, and we just pulled junk out and started forming an angel for my window. I love her. My friend Lisa made these great hair bows for little girls out of real gum and real candies and all kinds of little things inserted into the uh, hair bows. They're just darling. And on Candy made the wreath and the pumpkins. She's a friend of mine from Bartlesville. There is a dream catcher. Uh, wow, we panned around. Here's some vendors still setting up. That's Dusty there with Donna, and they do cards and mats, beautiful mat work, absolutely beautiful. I've been using it for some time on some of my work. This is by uh, Gwen. She does these three-dimensional dream creatures, gorgeous, and she does some earrings, and she also makes bracelets. Most of my vendors were Native American, so um, it's it was authentic Native American art. Mine's Native American influenced because I'm not officially considered Native American. And uh, to be Native American art, you have to actually carry a or have a uh, certificate for degree of Indian blood, CDIB. I believe the next shot will be of me resting with some friends before the grand opening. Boy, did I need the rest. I was exhausted at that point. Uh, I had newspaper people interviewing me. It was just great.
I was surprised how many people showed up when it was time for the ribbon cutting ceremony. We did that right at noon. We had folks uh, at the ribbon cutting from Missouri and Arkansas and uh, parts unknown. I'm not even quite sure because I was all in the middle of doing so much stuff at that point. Uh, the Katua Junior Miss Princess, I believe her name is Samantha Russell. She was there in regalia. By the way, it's regalia. It's not uh, costume. <laughs> regalia is the proper term. There's Rick and Deborah and Lisa and that's me. And some of the Little Miss Fall Festivals were there from Coweta. There's my grand opening sign. It took the lady from the newspaper a while to get us all lined up because there were so many people out there. Um, and some people were camera shy. And there's my Seneca in his ribbon shirt that I got him for Christmas. I was happy to see him wearing that that day. There's little Junior Miss Katua, UKB tribe. And just, I was surrounded by love. It was a lot of fun. This is Vicki in the green here. She started the Art Alliance in Coweta and at the library. And uh, she is the one who helped me make the angel that I'll show you later. She loves to bust everybody and make sure your faces are seen. There you go, perfect. Okay. I have a lady that's a little short on the back row. Hello. I got stuck. They're cutting the ribbon. You're still off the short on that back row. I said almost everybody that was important in my life showed up. Not everybody. There were some people missing that are very important in my life, but it was such a good day, and there were so many supporters, and people kept dropping in. This is just a few of them that were allowing us to take their pictures. The newspaper article is supposed to be out this week. It took so long to take these pictures. I hope she chose a good one. So that's a pretty good one, I think. I think they're all pretty good. It was nice to see friends all in a group like this. And some of them didn't know each other, so they got to know each other at this opening. It, that was a lot of fun. Sweet little, little princesses. And way in the background of the next few pictures here, you see my friend Cecilia. We have been friends since sixth grade. On the left here, you see Carrie from the Chamber of Commerce. And there I am with some royalty, and this little sweet little girl in front is my little cousin, Roger's daughter. Her name is Gracie, and I wish I had the name of the Little Princesses Fall Festival Princesses because they were adorable. I'm sorry I didn't get their names down. Look at all this yummy food, and Deborah Parkhurst made this dream catcher cake. Is that cool? Isn't that pretty? She does a lot of neat cakes. Give her a call if you want a cake and you're in this area. Audrey caught a little bit of himself there in the mirror, but that's his daughter on the right. Her name is Gracie again. 
there's Candy and the mother of, I don't know her name, but this is the mother of Miss Katua. There's some of my artwork again, some Pauver Paul statues. There's Jamie talking to Dusty about some mats. Sean makes these lovely neck pillows and she makes some neat purses that I've asked her to bring into my studio. And then the quilting is by Katrinka. Katrinka is going to teach quilting in the studio. She'll be one of my guest teachers. Isn't that pretty? You're in for a real treat here in just a few moments because we have some flute players. Uh, the junior Miss Katua plays the flute and also Timothy Nivaquaya plays the flute. My friend Rita in the blue coat. Uh, there's Gwen and Cecilia and uh, looks like Cassie. Um, I believe the flute playing is coming up next. That's her mother beside her and Tanya. So she is the junior Miss Cherokee, so she's going to play something for us. The Cherokee and the Katua are two separate tribes. Actually, she's the junior Miss Katua. The UKB tribe United Katua Band. The grand opening was from 12 noon until 6 p.m. and people kept dropping in all day long. And so I met new friends and some friends that I had not seen in years came by. I was just thrilled to see them. I wish I had a picture of you, Dana Smith and Liddy. I'm not sure we got pictures of you, but I sure was glad you were here. We're here with Timothy Nevaquaya and his wife, Alicia. And he plays the flute, but he's also a wonderful artist. Uh, you'll hear him play the flute in a moment. But they shared time with us, even though it was their anniversary, so on the 12th. So that was really special. If you think you've heard some of these names before uh, that I'm mentioning, Deborah, Timothy, Vicki, several people, it could be because they're in Studio ABC's Facebook group. And used it in courtship and... Um... The older men, they used it to relax, and, um, and it was really a, a healing instrument. The music, I think, uh, whenever it first evolved among, you know, the, the uh, northern and southern plains people, the instrument was used to heal, uh, I think, heal your spirit. Uh, I think that uh, the first uh, maker of the instrument uh, had lost his family, and then whenever he uh, discovered the flute, uh, you know, he started playing it. It uh, helped him to become whole again. And then he shared it with the, his people, and it spread throughout uh, the plains and you know off into the east and west coast. So, anyway, that's a little bit of a, a brief history of you know the the uh, Native American flute. But anyway, thank you, and I'll be playing later on. So. Right, thank you.
this is Sean on the right making pillows, and I think her friend's name is Shelly. I hope I got that right. There's my friend Candy with Seneca, and some of Candy's work. There's Timothy Nebequoy's work, and it got dark enough we could light up the angel in the window. She looked really pretty. I've added more to this display since the grand opening, but this is what it looked like at grand opening night in the window. And this is my beautiful cousin, Stephanie. She and her mom, Donna, my other beautiful cousin. I have lots of beautiful red-headed cousins. She's there. I was afraid Donna was going to miss. I sure was glad to see her and little Nolan. He was such a happy boy. These are some friends that uh, came with Mary Toller. Hello there, waving at us. Uh, the young gentleman made himself at home by using the markers that were laying out and did some little pictures. There's Jamie uh, resting on the sofa and Gwen working on one of her dream catchers. Here's one of our friends, Rhonda, who dropped by on her lunch break. And, oh, this is Shannon. And there's my family, my adopted family. I adopted these people. They call me Aunt Lily. Shannon and Tracy and their daughter, Avalon, and their son, Griffin. And as I said, they're my family, too. Not by blood, but we claim each other. It just amazes me how fast these babies grew up. And here we have Lindy and Candy and Jamie. It just so happens that we were working on the studio the day before and the, some Native American ladies who made meat pies came by and we asked them to return for the grand opening. This is the best five dollars you've ever spent. If you haven't had a Native American meat pie, you're missing out. The funds they made off of uh, selling these meat pies was going towards a friend of theirs who had kidney disease and had been suffering with her health lately. Very nice thing to do. This is Evelyn. Well, Evelyn, I got your back in this picture. Evelyn and her mother are from Arkansas, but you can see Evelyn's front in some of the pictures towards the beginning of the, the video, so. They came over from Arkansas, and this is my cousins, my sweet cousins again. And we got Roger, who was behind the camera for a while, and his wife, Tracy, and three of their daughters, and two of their daughter's friends. Donna's a new friend of mine. She came over with Dusty. They're from Jefferson City, Missouri, and Dusty does that neat mat work in the background there. Um, he has matted a lot of my work in the past. I don't know when I've seen people feel more relaxed at a gathering and it was just, it was marvelous. It was wonderful. I was relaxed too and I felt like perhaps part of it was the way I arranged the studio. That was my intent from the beginning to have cozy little chat places. I wanted to wait until Deborah and her husband Joe got back from dinner to cut the cake and she said I should have gone ahead but we wanted her to do the cutting and I couldn't hardly wait to taste it but didn't have time. And that first piece is always a booger to get out of there. I've got a lift somewhere. We need a plate. need a plate, huh? Thank you. Oh, it was easy. I almost missed out on Deborah's pumpkin uh, cake, that dream catcher cake, so I had them put this piece away for me. Here's Dusty who does the mat cutting with my friend Cecilia. And there's Seneca with the children, always with the kids doing something. She found one of my paper feathers for her hair. Again, look at how my friends are getting to know each other. I thought that was really neat. There's Mary on the left. There's Roger. He's having the cake. And there's Seneca. Uh, this is uh, back in his little bet's office again. Gracie's going to be one of my students, and so is Lainey.
and it's just about over and my cousin Donna here is leaving and Dusty who's also in this picture asked us to go out to dinner then a nice way to end the day lovely dinner we had I thoroughly enjoyed getting to know his lady friend I didn't tell you that the morning of the grand opening I desperately needed to get back home for something that I left and there were three Ashblend trucks and a pickup parked on my little bitty dead-end road couldn't get back and suddenly my bank card wouldn't work when I went to get copies and everything seemed to be going wrong but at the end everything turned out perfect absolutely perfect thank you for watching